and welcome to Perspectives. I personally am a businessman and I have uh, endless opportunities to travel and meet business people across the world. A lot of my friends who are investors in Asia over the, far, over the past 10, 15 years since I've been doing this, I've asked them to invest in Pakistan. There was a time about eight, nine years ago that these people who are some of the largest brokers in Asia wanted to come and invest in Karachi Stock Exchange. There was a time when there was a lot of talk about uh, Karachi Stock Exchange being invested into by international brokers. And that was a time when there was a peak of this discussion. They used to talk to me, we used to talk and figure out, you know, what can be done, what were the opportunities. And then the government changed. And for five years, there was absolute silence. Not that they had any difference with the Pakistan People's Party government or they didn't like the government, but they just felt that things were slightly unstable or not feasible for investment. Ever since election, the new government's in place, I haven't yet had the opportunity to meet these people. But I'd be interested in finding out how they feel now. Would they want to invest in Pakistan now or not? Is the environment better? Yes, the law and order situation remains the same. Sure. We have infrastructure issues. We have energy issues. We've got all these issues. But these issues are present in many countries. And the very same people invest heavily in those countries. Billions of dollars go into countries where there's with as much worse conditions. Yet they go there. What's so different about those countries which Pakistan doesn't have? Why do they why did they shy away from Pakistan? And does this new government change that equation or not? My guest on the far right, Ms. Raida Ratif, she's, she's the head of marketing and distribution of United Bank Limited funds. Right? There's a reason I just did that. I'll tell you that in a moment. Um, on my right, a great honor, Mr. Shahid Ali Habib, CEO of IFAB Investment. Shahid, thank you very Thanks much for coming. Thanks. On my left, Mr. Saad Amanullah, who is uh, the CEO of Gillette Pakistan. Just thank you very much. And on my far left, me, Mohammed Ali Khan, who is an investment banker, who recently returned to Pakistan. And I would like to give credit. Today's show was initiated by his suggestion. Thank you very much for taking time out. Um, right, I was just, she said, you know, I'm, she was specific in saying she's with UBL funds, and I kept teasing that, you know, United Bank Limited, UBL Investment, so UBL funds. Um, you've taken the time out and come to Pakistan. Um, uh, do you think now the world would be more receptive in spite of the problems in Pakistan? We can't assume the problems are going away in the next six months. They, they're here. Even if you have magic, you can't take them away. So do you think money will come in now or not? Uh, it's not a matter of if the money will come in now. See, we're in a euphoric state right now. But that doesn't mean that the entire outside world is in the euphoric state to come into Pakistan for investments. Mm -hmm. Pakistan has had investments in the past 12, 13 years. We have had $26 billion, peaking in 2007 of $5 billion. What we don't pay attention to is, first, we have to create a domestic market. When you invite somebody to your house, first, you clean up your house. You make sure that your guest is comfortable. Same way, we have to create an infrastructure for investments to come in. We have to have image building for Pakistan. We have to have policy advocacy for Pakistan, for investors who come in. What are the policies? Sometimes an investment is counterproductive if client service and client facilitation is not done once the investor comes in. Once bitten, twice shy. Mm -hmm. So these are the things we have to do internally. We can give, we can talk about figures, what comes in, what goes out, what is good. Internal ball borrowing should be less. I mean, we can go into all the, the whole technicalities. The whole technicalities. I think we have to take a very simplistic approach. Maybe I am making it over simplistic, but we have to have a common sense approach for overseas investors to look in. I have been there on the other side for 16 sure. years. I have invested in seven different countries. Uh, you know, for, for the investment bank I work for. So uh, what we look for is very systematic availability of data, number one. Mm -hmm. Transparent data for in the country we're going and investing in. And that data has to be absolutely accurate. The willingness of the people, meaning the, 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 investors. Uh, invest, the government people All right. or the uh, investment promotion agencies, IPAs, what, how much are they willing to serve us and how much will they bend over backwards? So we have to look at a few things 
in a very common sense way to bring in new investment. Shad, sure, you belong to a house which is uh, which is a risk-taking house. Not you don't know this to say. Um, I don't know which show I was watching last night. I think the men who made America, and I think they were referring to one of the Morgans, the early Morgans. And the quote was that the best time to invest is when there's blood on the streets. Um, there is blood on the streets, unfortunately. Is this not really the time to make massive amounts of money in Pakistan? I think, uh, you know, first of all, uh, let me clear that, you know, as we said, that, you know, first we have to clean up our own house, you know, and the investors are hopeful that we are going to clean up our house now. And they are more aggressive these days and they are more hopeful that, you know, the issues that we are facing, like circular debt issues uh, or energy issues and all other issues, you know, the government, the new government is, is going to handle all those issues. And that's why the risk-taking abilities are also coming into place, you know. It's a matter of risk appetite, you know, how much is appetite you have. Like if we take the risk, we don't take the risk blind, you know. We have to actually analyze each and everything. We have to analyze the future earnings, you know, whether the companies have got future earnings or not. You know, the index have, if the index has gone up, does not mean that the prices have gone up. It means that the price ending multiple is going up. And if still, you know, I used to say that in 2008, the 15,000 index was is expensive than current index of 22,000 because, you know, the price ending multiple is cheaper these days. So it's not the matter that the prices are going up or we are taking more risk. It's the matter that how we, you know, how we value our investments, you know, how actually we, we try to analyze and we try to actually recommend people or investors that, you know, this company has got these values, this company has got these cash flows, and this company has got these dividend yields. And you have to compare this investments with other investments opportunities as well. So taking into account the other investments, you know, we see that the equity investment in Pakistan is still cheaper, relatively cheaper than other regional investments, you know. And like... Uh, but even beyond equities, there's a lot more. I mean, yeah, yeah, beyond equities, there's a lot more. But, you know, as far as, you know, if we compare the asset class, then, you know, over the last 10 years, equities returns is around 30%, 35% per annum compared to other investment opportunities. Yeah. So, you know, we have always beaten the other investment opportunities so you know and this time if you see if you if you just you know go through the return from january 2012 to date the market has gone up 80 percent and it's still the market is trading at 7.8 times price earning multiple it's not 12 times <coughs> price earning multiple like in 2008 it's not so 14 there's still room for, for there's growth. still room it's not 14 times price earning multiple like in europe or 18 times price earning multiple like in India, it is still 7.8 or 8 times price earning multiple. So there is a still a room. More money from that. Um, the quote I've, just, I've Googled it is Baron Rothschild, um, and, the, and the word the time to buy is when there's blood in the streets. Rather, you came to uh, one of my shows and you really sold Pakistan very well. You said there's a lot of opportunity, a lot of money to be made. Has, has it become better with this new government? Has the opportunity become widened or... I think if you look at the, uh, if you do a comparison, it's too early to compare at this point. Okay. Uh, the the new government has really taken over, uh, just taken their. Uh, actually, still it, it's, taking over. Yeah, it's still in the process, and it has not really taken charge. Okay. And uh, uh, again, if you look at the budget, it was presented recently, and uh, it was a very hurried budget. Although, if we make an analysis, we can. There are certain positives and certain things that were which we can point out. However, uh, whether when you come back to that statement, I would say, yes, the time to buy is definitely there when the blood is in the street, not to reap. So, yes, you can't make money at this point. You invest. You start and you keep it there. As uh, Shahid Saab said, I will just add more to it. Um, your stock market has given you 400 plus percent returns or 500 percent returns absolute in five, uh, 10 years' time. Similarly, your commodities investment, if we actually look at the gold uh, aspect, that is also almost thereabouts. Mm -hmm. And if you add in that, the fact that your rep rupee has depreciated versus the dollar in this duration with, uh, you know, five years may. So if you take that into account, it's more than 400%, wow. almost 500%. Third, uh, you look at the real estate. The real estate market has flourished in the last five, eight, ten years. 
Well, the worse, Again, the worse the condition, the better the well, real estate exactly. market. Exactly. So, uh, on a longer term, if you take that view, and and it's still going on. Again, if you look at the government now, um, looking at the background in the past, historic, uh, if you look at it, I feel that the government is more um, uh, supportive of businesses, corporates. Um, so, so uh, small and medium uh, SMEs will flourish at this time. Um, they will try and obviously they have, now they have to also prove themselves. So first year they will take charge, They'll do, the results will start coming in after the first year, in the second, third year. But onwards. there is money making opportunity. Definitely there. Sir, the, I, I, I'm sorry I was distracted, I was actually reading the, the complete quote which is referred further is, uh, the, the best time to make uh, money is when they blood, even if it's your own blood. <laughs> even uh, the, the original quote is believed to be, buy when there's blood in the streets, even if blood is your own. I was watching that as well. <laughs> last night. I've been watching it for the last few days. Exactly. It's an amazing so, program. Um, where should the money go? If there is somebody sitting, if, if I'm, if you, you, you're going to conference this weekend, if I'm sitting somewhere next week, if I'm talking to people with a few hundred million dollars sitting here and there, what? How do we sell Pakistan? Where do we tell them to put the money? You know, it's interesting uh, that if you look at Pakistan, uh, the, the, there's a lot of differences between... I mean, if you look for a foreign investor, mm -hmm. there's this survey called Ease of Doing Business in mm -hmm. Pakistan. And as far as protecting the investor, it has amazing rating. It's 23 out of 175 nations, which means you can repair three of your profits. You know, they, they, there's no control over the, the, the capital except for services. You know, uh, you you can you can write off fifty percent of your depreciation. I mean, there are things uh, I mean uh, which is uh, attracting. However, if you come to why do our rating is one hundred and seven? It's not twenty three because there is one hundred and seventy fifth on getting electricity, on protecting contracts. When it comes to you know things like paying taxes, it's like one sixty five. One. So, on one side, the government has made an amazing. In fact, twenty three means that this government has amazing policies. Not this government, but. In general, Pakistan. Pakistan in general has and and the investors who have come into Pakistan, uh, if you talk to them, they are making good money. They are making good money. If you look at the stock exchange, like he was talking about, if you look at all the farm FMCG who, who I represent, or even the oil companies or many of the others, circular debt is probably one of the things which is mm -hmm. really pulling them down. They are making double digit uh, before tax margin, uh, and 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 we have not yet even penetrated the market. So if you look at you know any any category, I think Pakistan is open for retail. You can you can talk about logistics. You can talk about FMCG. I mean, investments can be huge. But the problem is that, uh, like he said very rightly, we are feeling very euphoric because you know this may be a business friendly government. But what about the people who are sitting outside? They don't know Nawaz Sharif. They don't know. They are going to look at the ground reality, and if they look at that, you know, paying taxes and nightmare in Pakistan, or you know, getting electricity, uh, it's 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 not going to attract anybody. For example, I was in an investment conference, but. Two or three years ago, we were, they were trying to make a cool corridor in, in, across Pakistan because we've got agricultural goods mm -hmm. and fruits which goes to bad. And the Pakistan, I think, uh, planning commissioner did a very amazing study where they had worked out that we need like six, seven major warehouses somewhere in Punjab, Sin, somewhere in the middle. And Japanese and Korean, I was sitting in, in PC at that time. And very good presentation, everything about investment. And then the first question that came out of this Korean guy was like, will you guarantee electricity? The whole investment conference is finished. I mean, I mean, that's what I'm saying. We need to get our homework done. Okay. Um, we need to ba get the basics right, and uh, and then we need to move ahead. I think I think that two things have greatly improved our image, and that is one is election, and the other is voter turnout. I mean, I mean, people see and these, uh, these democracy basically. Yeah, these, this is a very big development, very positive development because you know when we met lots of fund managers in in UK before the election, they were asking about the election. And and they were positive about Pakistan because, you know, they were managing frontier market funds. Our weightage is 4.48%, but they have invested 6% or 6.5% or 7%. So they were upbeat about Pakistan. They were positive. They, were, they have overweight Pakistan. And, you know, they were waiting for the election. They were asking that whether which government is going to come or, you know, they were asking whether there, there, will, whether there will be simple majority or coalition government. So they they would be very happy about the developments going on. The fact that it's a, it's a majority government and the fact that there was a turnout yeah. they, and, uh, and the fact that the democracy did 
take it's a place. smooth, yeah. uh, smooth this replacement. This is the first democracy and it changed over. Exactly. Right? And actually what I feel is that uh, these uh, international investors are monitoring, always keep a very close eye. Sure. They realize that uh, they are going to make better returns in this in this region versus their own countries at present. So if you look in terms of percentage of returns, they know this is, uh, this is the, place. the place. However, def definitely those uh, repercussions or problems are there which inhibit them or it, it takes longer for them to decide to enter the country. So routing in investments through the SACRA accounts is another thing. But actually coming in with a manufacturing setup or uh, oh, putting up plants or huge investments in terms of real, uh, um, you know, solid investments, that is their concern. Okay, I want to just put your question. I was just asking you to hang on. Oh, I have a question. What Saad said, fine, you know, will you, will you be able to give us guaranteed electricity? We can't, fine. But large investors, and I mean large investors in terms of hundreds of millions of dollars invested, billion dollar investors, they also know that these are very minor problems. So when you say the 23 ranking and the rest is 175 ranking, I think they know very well how to bring that ranking down to 28 for themselves. <laughs> we all know that. And if we can survive, and they know exactly how to do it. And their large houses, I will not take a name, mega, not large, mega corporation running under the radar in Pakistan, making huge money, oil, gas. There's some serious work happening. And they're working around the whole... 175 ranking problem. So, I would like to hear, you know, it's not all that bad. Even though the theoretical ranking may be bad, but practically it's not so bad. First of all, in this past 65 years, there's not been a single time when there is a survey done as to how much money we are investing in promoting investments from overseas and how many jobs are they creating in Pakistan. We have no statistics. There are two types of investments. Like Shahid is from capital markets. I am from capital markets. Capital market brings in liquid investments. When you talk about returns, they bring in liquid investments. Liquid investments usually do not create jobs as much as an FDI or a greenfield investment. Mm -hmm. Where greenfield investment investors come in, they set up something, they create jobs, they create infrastructure <clears throat> around uh, their facilities, and they come in for a long term. We have to promote both sides. I am yeah, not saying yeah. that capital markets should be promoted and right. something else should be uh, no, left yeah. alone. And we have to promote both at the same time. I see, I'll see capital markets get promoted by default. By default. Yeah. Stock market has gone up. People I'm an investor in Taiwan. I wasn't even looking at Karachi. Yeah. Boom, it comes up on my screen. And I yeah. said, oh, wow, Karachi is up 50% in the past one year, 38% okay. in dollar okay. terms. You see, there's money there. Capital markets attract That's the easy general job. public. That's easy. Okay, job. somebody with twenty thousand dollars can come in. Sure. Foreign direct investment requires serious, serious money, money, serious investors, serious talks. Like Saat said, the entire conference came to a close when they said, "Will you guarantee electricity?" If I were an investor, I can deal with, uh, you know, without being politically correct, I can even deal with corrupt officials. What I can't deal with is four years down the road when nobody can help me and I have to shut down my plant and write off that investment. Because foreign direct investments are not just hundred million, hundreds just, of millions of dollars. Just a quick question. I need to go for a break. Just a very quick question. Any one of you can answer. Do you know of any massive foreign investment who shut their operation, wiped off their money and left the country? Oh, yeah. Pharmaceutical. One or two companies have done that. So they they yeah. left. Yeah. They, they left sold it to a local partner. No, no. Did they leave? You missed my question. Yeah. Did they ever leave short changed, showing a loss on the books? In the long run, no. Thank you. Whatever money they bring in, they yeah, multiply it mega folds, yeah. in the long run, and then they may walk away. That's fine for various reasons, but they still may, they don't come here to sink money. Okay, but, but the new ones are not yeah. But your point. <laughs> let me hold this. Let me hold. Let me take a quick short break. I know all of you won't jump on, jump on me for that one. Let's take a short break.
saying stay with us watching perspective i i'm willing to take a beating from all of you i have never known any large investment to ever sink money in pakistan what i said was everybody in pakistan is making money yeah we are doing it in a very difficult situation but we are happy i mean we would have left otherwise you cannot people are investing into greenfield i mean in existing investors for example i was giving you a statistic in the break is overseas chamber of commerce has done a survey of they have got 200 overseas members and 63% say that they will further invest in the next 2 to 3 years and 68% have said they'll invest in the next 4 to 5 years in fact the total investment they're saying over the next 2 to 3 years is going to be 3 billion dollars i mean that's but that is not fdi these are investors who are currently in the system and the point and one point i want to make is and i think she touched upon it a little bit the new budget that has come in is not very conducive to our existing investors we are this captive audience yeah. and isi ko aap squeeze kiye ja rahe hain which is not fair in fact they need to expand the tax net which we have been talking for a long time because it's just going to discourage people you know if you if you and the other thing that they can also do is for example in this budget they have really not focused on fdi i'll tell you why uh ek ek in ek opportunity where 50% of depreciation can be written off for sure. for investor usko purchase kar diya for no reason at all i understand maybe profit pe kuch tax banega the other thing is one thing that we have been saying to the government is a very small thing for example import of equipment to setting up a plant should be zero rated okay. why do you want to make sure. uh, you know, custom duty it's a one time custom duty equipment does not come here and get consumed it's going to last for the next 10 20 30 years so please equipment ko to aane dein zero duty pe people will be encouraged to bring it in then Uh, you know setting up new plants so it these choti choti cheeze where sometimes you know we need to get the fvr involved and make these calls uh, just one tweet maham says as much as we try to talk about things in isolation fdi coming to country depends a lot on how much it can be trusted um i agree with what you're saying but i'm still stuck on that one point in spite of all these nasty things in pakistan you know you just said it will discourage people the expansion of tax net i think has been talked about in media after every budget for yeah. the past 60 budgets and it's still the same it's still the same Nobody's yet problem. i have never seen anyone getting discouraged oh, they because they don't have look a look at the other chart right? fdi was 6 5.4 billion so it's not 5 billion and now it's 0.8 billion how do i say that in english this is this is reflecting loss in the profits right a loss in the profit yeah that's what it is but still profit then you have to a it it means you these things could have been better fine it's not all that bad but there could have been a better much better investment uh, of, uh, if we had given them better opportunities you know these multinationals or international investors are the ones which are actually contributing to your tax uh, uh, money your local uh, investors or local businessmen do not Uh, pay taxes as transparently as your international uh, MNCs do. I think that uh, I think uh, we have to recognize and we have to appreciate investors who are making money. We don't have to blame that why they are making money. Right. 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 Absolutely. And because if they make money, if Mark Mobius is making money, he's bringing mm-hmm. many other foreigners yeah. in here in Pakistan. He is saying he is saying bluntly he is saying that. OGDC is the best exploration investment I have in 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 the world. Absolutely. So if you get these kind of you know image building, you know, then I think we have to appreciate, we have to respect our local investors as well and our foreign investors as well. May I may I interject? And our culture. I was not reprimanding these people. I was reprimanding these people. for basically saying oh there's trouble i'm saying we find this trouble in in, no, in berlin but there's money you pointed it towards me let me just clarify no i <laughs> i did this to the left <laughs> okay both of us you know the point i'm trying to make is you know fdi in countries like even sri lanka and bangladesh is more than pakistan yes. okay in yes. india it's 5 to 10 times more that's what i'm saying we we are very happy okay, at 5 billion 5 billion is nothing i understand there's I great that you're talking making money in pakistan you know right? I, everybody is making Thank money in you. pakistan let me give you a simple example you <laughs> look at the corporate earnings no, if I you look at the corporate earnings of the listed companies yeah as an investment banker who has seen thousands and thousands of companies over my career hmm. you look at the percentage of companies paying dividends and the percentage of companies that are making declaring profit quarter after quarter after He's quarter increasing. i promise you i would have dreamed i would have salivated on wall street it's to see this this means they're making money if they're making money that means that forget about for a second foreign direct investment there is a lot of money in pakistan that can be brought out and brought in from the swiss account agreed 
create a conducive environment for Pakistani billionaires to invest in Pakistan. And there are many. And I am sure there will be two or three out of 5,000 who will. Because history teaches us that they have. And that's a lot of money too. And that's a lot of money. And it is 38% okay. earning growth. Just to make the record. Okay. You know, it's 38% earning growth versus, you know, our GDP growth of... Uh, 3.7 plus 12 percent. I mean, nominal GDP growth is around 13, 14 percent growth. Okay, it's 38 percent earning growth. So the companies that are listed in Karachi Stock Exchange, they are earning, you know, it's amazing. massively. Yeah, amazing early. And the other thing that we, I think, also pointed out, that we also have to create an environment so that the company can also raise capital from the market as well. You know, like for the last three, four years, only 16 companies got listed. You know, right. well, and yeah, that, four to yeah. five companies got, got unlisted. Okay, or unlisted. so you know, yeah. only we need new companies on the board. New companies yeah. are not coming in because you know, when the greenfield project comes in, you know, there there are some, you know, there are stringent rules, uh, you know, uh, from the CCP that you know, if the greenfield project is coming in, then you know, the plant should be seventy five percent there before you can raise the capital. You know, these kind of rules are hurdles for the you know. Shahid, let me just. Shed some light, sorry, let me just take one second. When you talk about new companies coming in and getting listed on, on, on to our exchanges, we have one of the stringent regulations for a company to get listed. We only allow companies or promote companies where a, somebody who comes up with $20 million to raise $20 million. There is no value for idea. There is not a single idea company listed on Pakistani exchanges. You look at anywhere else, India has succeeded. Why? Because there is value of an idea I kick comes in. Facebook. How much money does Mark Zuckerberg put from his own pocket? Very Zero. Yeah. Zero. It was his idea which is worth billions. I think it's bad. What? It's bad. It's, bad. it's absolutely bad. The, pendulum, the problem is you've gone too far out on being extremely yeah. controlling. You have to come in in the middle. I'm not, it's good. One of the good, good parts is actually because, because of, yeah, both, one of the reasons that we survived this banking crisis is because of the strong stand, you know, uh, SVP uh, rules and regulations. Fine. But the problem is for corporations, I mean, I was doing a study, I did a, a American Business Council Summit and we, I spent time with Nadeem Nakwi on Karachi Stock Exchange and, you see, and it was sh shocking, the number of companies that are list leaving the listing. Yeah. And, and, and that is not good because what you're doing is a corporatization of Pakistan is not happening. Documentation of the economy happens and people want to be there and, you know, the investors can invest and people can do. So the government needs to let go. Obviously, we need to have control. For example, intellectual property organization needs to get the act together. Intellectual property has to protect it. Competition commission. Sure. These, these sure. state institutions have to play mm -hmm. their role. But I think SACP has, I think, gone a little bit overboard in their code of corporate governance. And they need to, for example, foreign directors came for Mushkil aga ye. Many of the foreign companies are foreign directors. Now, getting approval for them is, an, is a nightmare. Saad, if you don't want, uh, if, you, if Karachi Stock Exchange or SECP does not want to relax the regulations of Karachi Stock Exchange, perfectly fine. Let the old boys be old boys. Create a, a small exchange. Entire world has it. This is not, like the, I'm not like coming this, up with an idea. Like the AIM. AIM. I'm just that's 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 I'm that's asking them to repeat what happens all over the world. Okay, there's New York Stock Exchange, the blue-blooded old boys of Gillette and IBM and, and the big sure, boys. Sure. Start a small one. Okay, where the requirement is a, a kid can come in at Let the age of 22 and, and raise a few hundred thousand rupees. Yeah, yeah. To five crore rupees, to three crore rupees. In fact, funding that is a major issue for new investor startups. Because funding is a big problem. And in fact, that is the easiest way to raise funding. Exactly. If you've got a good idea. And of course, that's not like I got put. So somebody will put in 5,000, somebody will put in 10,000, 15,000. They'll pull up and it'll become. But the same thing can be done through so, sort of uh, venture capital firms also coming in. We don't even have those. Talk about an idea, be, uh, people be betting on ideas. We don't even have proper venture capital firms or pri uh, private equity firms right in up. place. Venture. That, you know, these are organizations that would help the smaller businesses or ideas to flourish. And yes, out of 100 only five would actually succeed. The rest would fail. But then there has to be someone who actually... Those five will give so much exactly. in return. Exactly. That, that is somebody that who failed. has to understand that, this calculation. But we don't see that here. Uh, <laughs> so you can't really just say it's the regulator or the regulation. If you see the 2000 
uh, one till the 2005 or so, we saw many IPOs happening at that time. After that, there weren't any IPOs. So you're not actually even, uh, there are no IPOs, there's nothing happening. Rather because that time the valuations were better. You know, yeah. you know companies were coming because the valuations got better because the price earning, earning earnings multiple is, were, yeah. were much higher. There so, you know, and the price to book value was also higher. So it was it was for their for their benefit to, you know, list uh -huh. or to <laughs> offer for sale. So, you know, this, uh, this is a day's a time, but we're talking about the time where you know, companies want to raise money and the valuations are not there. Even then, the environment should be so conducive that, you know, they can easily raise money by having simple rules and regulations. In Pakistan, like in... Anywhere. In, no, no. Like in every investment idea in Pakistan, the rich, it makes it... The regulators have made it easy for the rich to become richer. Why? They have this paid-up capital uh, requirement on Karachi Stock Exchange. Yeah. If you have $20 million, mm -hmm. I will give you $20 million of okay. public no, money. A poor me, kid with great idea. Let me add here. I understand the regulator, I understand the, the old boys. Fine. Shift. Let's forget the government for, okay. for a moment. A lot of, lot of uh, individual mentoring happens. I know, yeah. Saad, there's a lot of individual mentoring. Why can't the five big houses of Pakistan... What, who's stopping you? It is already being done. They're doing it, but again, it's not no, as... No, 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 but you have enough not muscle. Not formal. I, I think I start understand where I'm going. You have enough muscle to create a Pakistani. There's an, I opened the website, the name Italia, this aim, which says it's, um, it's been there since 1995. 3,000 companies from all over the world are there. billion euros. Right. And they have a panel of supporters, mentors, accountants, lawyers, who help you do has So what's stopping the mega houses of Pakistan? I want to take, want to take a name. One is sitting here. The four others. What's stopping you from are, creating an environment and you can muscle the government into creating such a such a such no, a we are not only creating an environment. We are we are ourselves investing in Pakistan. I mean, our our no, group is like. I, I understand. I want to think why. why uh, uh, Arif Habib group is doing phenomenal work. And in, like I said, you're risk takers. What you've done in the past five years is phenomenal. Amazing investments coming in. in the economy. Oh, absolutely. I respect that. What I'm saying is that the discussion here that why yeah. isn't there a small stock exchange in, in, in opportunities for small investors, people who have $10,000 or maybe 5,000, 20,000 rupees, give them an opportunity, for idea based opportunity. Why isn't that coming? Forget the government for a moment. Why aren't we doing something like that? No, we are doing local road shows for that. You know, we are giving, providing awareness to the people of this country. Mm -hmm. You know, like we did road show last time and we, we are just, you know, we are giving awareness that, look, your money parked in the bank, you're okay. making, you're getting 4 to 5% return mm -hmm. and through your money, others are making 30% of return on equity. You know, I think yeah. what Faisal is asking, Shahid, no, is why don't corporations create a stock exchange? We are in the technology-based day and age. It will take six months to put together something like And we have now. the muscles. We, we have the muscles, we have the brains, we have the technology. So where so there's a regulatory like framework. There's a regulatory framework. I was going to say that. You don't want to talk back. about regulatory framework. Please do. But there's hindrance. I and say in a constructive way. Please do. I say it in a very constructive way. You know, I mean, these are the people and there are thousands more who have much more brains. than. I'm not stopping from going there. What I'm saying is... I'm just trying to find a road map. I mean, if we can't do that, maybe... The willingness but, of corporation. But is there something stopping that as well? Willingness is there. Willingness of corporation. Okay. But but the regulate, regulatory framework is there, which is stopping us to do this way, you know? So maybe... Uh, so you're saying this has been really thought about and discussed at a, a, a certain platform, no. uh, the option of actually putting up a stock exchange, another no. stock exchange? You know, uh, another stock exchange will not serve the purpose, you know? I think OTC market, we have the OTC market as well, but that is not actually fully utilized, you know, although there is a market, but you know, companies are not coming in there as well, like companies are not coming in the equity market to raise capital. So, you know, the conducive environment should be there. The regulatory framework should be user friendly. Right yeah. from the time when you register a company with SECP. Let's not even talk about coming to Karachi Stock Exchange yet. Right then and there, what is your paid up capital? You pay uh -huh. yeah. a ridiculous yeah. amount of fee based right. on your yeah. paid up capital. A poor kid or a middle class yeah. kid with they a great idea that. can't even pay the, 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 the chalan. Can't, can't even do the paperwork. They can't even do register a company. Forget about the stage of coming and, and, you know, and the, and the cost of raising equity is also very high. Absolutely. So where's the solution? I think the solution lies 
in the mindset of the new government mm-hmm. somebody in the government and i i would suggest it's the prime minister himself takes it upon himself mm-hmm. that i want to drive entrepreneurship in this country i want to drive small and medium industries and he needs to make his little little you know ob- objective with a vision and goal and his own team and literally every month sit in that give next steps have you done this this regulation ko kam karo isko karo small medium industry ko restructure karo i mean right now i i also sit on a uh, on a ad, uh, advisory board mm-hmm. which we are trying to restructure small as smida mm-hmm. and and you realize that smida literally has done nothing up till now sure. it's an amazing body if you look at indian smida or the us smida i mean they have literally created you know new businesses all over the place mm-hmm. and and mujhe last week koi bata raha tha ek entrepreneur ki the kp ka jo hai smida is doing an amazing job it has to do with the person who's sitting over there whether he is trying to invite people trying to break uh, solve their problem so i think what i'm trying to suggest is this government it's an ideal time for them yeah. this country will grow the economic growth gdp will come from small and medium industries it will not come from these multinationals theek hai na it will come if you get 1000 company picking up every year or 2000 ke people and this will not start start, uh, start up until you resolve all these smaller issues and these smaller issues will only happen if somebody at the executive level can make decision can call the ccp here and say okay fine we will cut down the requirement for this and he calls up you know competition commission give them something you tell the intellectual property if somebody comes with an idea you need to make sure you protect that idea nobody runs away with it these are the things that have to be done at a very high level and only yeah. then will this country start to the really CCP see gdp has done wonders growth. over the years in automating the system and yeah, making yeah. it technology based yeah. also closing notes for running out of time go ahead your closing notes yeah. ccp has done wonders the technology wise they have created ease of of you know putting the forms together so on and so forth coming back to the original point uh like that said we need to have centers for entrepreneurial development like iba has where young boys are taught and encouraged to create businesses and young girls please young boys and girls sorry we <laughs> have to be politically correct for god sake <laughs> young boys girls <laughs> you want to unleash her her her, her anger uh, but pakistan innovation fund is doing something like actually you know i'm member of this pakistan innovation foundation which is trying to drive innovation in pakistan and there's another thing called uh, network of uh, new g network of entrepreneurs planning working group where we are trying to actually bring all the entrepreneurial under one and do advocacy so we are trying to do it from the private sector point of view but you know it will take us a long time unless we can partner with some government agency who can really help us drive it there are people in the private sector who would help to hold hands and and but and the real and application will come will come from the government side i think we have to work very hard in i think creating an environment so that the companies can raise capital from the from the from the market and the investors can use their their funds for you know for high yield investments i think we have to work really hard we have to go for the road shows we have to present we have to give, provide awareness to the people not here also out, out, also outside as well I think I'll uh, build upon what all of these people have said on uh, on a more macro perspective uh, macro scale if we look at the larger corporates they don't need help the bigger boys really know the game they are in and they know the risks they have taken and they know that those uh, the returns that uh, they're getting are going to be better uh, so they don't need the help it's the middle uh, in medium sized in- investors who actually need the help and guidance and entrepreneurial and uh, cu- uh, coming back to this thing i think since 2009 and 10 this entrepreneurs have been born this yeah. whole process has been started people have actually go- I, i've seen bankers put uh, start up their uh, restaurants and uh, up, you know their own really uh, businesses so they have really come up and have taken that risk now they need to be able to sustain it so the so we need the government or the larger bodies or regulators whoever it is to come in and help them sustain it because another year two years if they're not breaking even or making profits they'll wind up and go back to working so you know this they're in this incubation phase where the support is really needed um again coming back to the budget i feel you know uh, one step has already been taken there because they've increased the a uh, loan amount mm-hmm. up to 2 million or something or, or 20 million that that uh, sure. SMEs can actually avail that's a positive step but just announcing this is not enough 
you know, the, as uh, Sahasab said, you need to take the steps and ensure that it's completed. Ms. Saima Kadwai says, um, in Pakistan, five people can't sit together to discuss without hitting each other. And you're talking of five groups to form something. Um, <laughs> that is wrong. That is wrong. <laughs> Ms. Naam says, we have the muscle, the brain and the technology, but your large corporations have the intention, business is cutthroat. And she says, it all sounds good when you sit and talk about this on a talk show. I know it's easy to sit here and talk about it, but let me be honest. Adversity, I always believe, creates massive opportunity. Pakistan has seen a lot of, a lot of adversity in the past seven, eight years. And a new young generation is just buzzing in this country. There's new blood. They don't have a choice but to survive. It is their survival. They all can't become phone snatchers or murderers or target killers. The good, honest people. This, this nation is built upon very intelligent people. We are a very intelligent nation. Test your, test your IQs, you'll be, you'll be surprised what our IQs are. Uh, entrepreneurial growth is inherent. It is happening. The number of innovative ideas which are coming up on the internet, which are coming up on the street, are phenomenal. People are selling jewelry online. People are running small restaurants, halwa puri. It, there's a lot of stuff happening. The only thing we need is just a bit more faith, support, and maybe within our own ranks, we need to come together and create this activity. Once it starts, it's exponential. It's like a domino effect, not in the negative way, but in the positive way. It'll just keep happening. So let's let's have that faith and belief, and inshallah we'll get that. Thank you very much, all of you. Until next time, good night.